live. Um, my name is Mr. Campanell, and I'm going to be doing some live coding today with the R programming language. And um, I'm not going to be enjoying a little bit of mukbang because I just ate uh, right before the show. Um, I had some Korean fried chicken. Uh, this is delicious. It's taking over America. So uh, just props to my audience in on Afrika TV uh, from uh, South Korea. Your fried chicken is the best in the world. And now in America, we are now starting to realize that. And um, again, hopefully provide a little bit of companionship in the next 20 to 30 minutes or so. Today, um, I'm going to be doing some uh, text analytics. Text analytics is near and dear to my heart. Um, I think that it is a little niche in uh, data science that is really, really powerful. And a lot of it is uh, overlooked. So uh, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a PDF document, and then we're going to be extracting the text and then we're going to be summarizing that text and uh, trying to draw some conclusions out of this. Um, this is this is going to be this is really kind of useful for things like uh, data journalism, uh, any type of uh, issue advocacy. Uh, what we're because uh, what I'm going to show a little bit later on the show, and um, you know possibly any type of. Um, uh, policy um, analysis as well. So that's uh, that's going to be what's uh, on the agenda today. As always, I do like to give a uh, shout out to uh, my subscribers on Twitch and uh, my new subscriber, May Ankh McNulty. Uh, thank you for uh, subscribing to uh, Data Science Live. Um, I appreciate um, I appreciate the follow. So uh, let me uh, just kind of switch things over here and just kind of bring up uh, our studio and just going to talk a little bit about um, the, the packages that we're going to be using today. So, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to be using dplyr. Um, the PDF tools is the package that we're going to use to extract the text. And uh, TidyText, um, which is a wonderful package, um, is going to be, be able to put that text into um, a data frame, and that's going to allow us to analyze it. And then I have Stringer because there's some uh, text handling and text cleanup that, um, that I like to do. Um, and I'm going to just kind of copy and paste the URL, copy and put it into the chat right here. So uh, I have it on my uh, website, datasciencelive.com, and you can uh, download it and maybe um, uh, work along with me uh, as we uh, as we go through um, through the episode. So uh, I'm going to loosen my tie here, and we're going to get started. Um, uh, now. So the first thing that uh, I'm going to do is we're going to, well, I think I'll, before we get, even get started, let me show you the, the PDF and I'm going to pull it up here um, and uh, explain a little bit about it. So this is a document here that is implementation of the president's border security and immigration enforcement policies that was on data.gov. And it's um, a memo on um, how the um, uh, Department of Homeland Sec Security is going to uh, implement the executive order that uh, President Trump signed in pretty much uh, after like the first, looks like the first five days into, um, into his presidency. So he made some promises about border security. He created an, an executive um, action or an executive order uh, to honor those promises that he made in his campaign. And uh, this document here is how it's going to be implemented. So um, this is, like I said, this, this could be used for um, any type of data journalism or issue advocacy or um, any type of uh, policy analysis. Uh, and if you 
collect a lot of these. You can use these tools and and um, get a kind of a bigger, broader picture of uh, what is actually happening um, uh, as you summarize these documents. So that's kind of what we're going to get started with now. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put my little comment in here and extract text from PDF. Move this over just a little bit more. Okay, so we have a lot of room here to see. And I'm going to call this exec order. And I'm going to use the PDF text. And I've got this PDF. I'm just going to, I have it on a little notepad over here on the side. I'm just going to copy it. It's, it's downloaded on my hard drive. Copy and paste this in here. And we're going to run, we're going to run our libraries. Load these all up. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, run this code here and it's going to extract the PDF. It's going to extract the text out of the PDF. So really nice handy. Oh, here we go. And uh, if we look here under the global environment, we have a, um, I'll just go to, we'll just view this. Can I just click this on here? Maybe I just have to do, let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to type it in down here. Move this over up. And kind of typed it out. It's a whole bunch of text. There's a lot of these little um, slash R's slash N's in here that um, we kind of need to clean up. And it's got, um, I think on this, it is a, um, it is a, character vector with um, uh, 13 elements in the vector. Those are related to the number of pages that are in this document. So, um, you know, on Data Science Live, I do like to use real world data because real world data is, uh, it's messy. And, um, you know, you need to find ways to, to uh, creative ways and really on how to uh, clean it up and uh, build it out for your analysis, and that's that's what I'm, we're going to do here. So, uh, next thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, put this text into a data frame because this is what we're going to need. Uh, we're going to need to have it in a data frame in order for us to really kind of process it with the tidy text package, and so I. Put this over here. I'm going to put put text into a data frame. A comment down there, and um, I'm just going to call this docdf, and I'm going to initialize this data frame as a tibble from the dplyr, and I'm going to say paragraph because. Uh, these pages are really kind of written as paragraphs uh, or and equals integer. And then I'm going to have text as a character. Character zero. I'm going to run this. Okay. And you will see here we have a, a uh, data frame called um, docdf, zero observation. So this is initialized. And I'm going to um, put a for loop in here. I'm going to go through um, each element in, um, in this uh, character vector um, and st uh, store the text and store the paragraph. So for i equals one, oh, oh, no, I'm sorry, I in one to length, length of, what is this, exec order, 
exact order. And put this down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to clean up this text. Okay, a um, little got a little note here from a chat from uh, Quiet Deviant LV. Uh, thank you for uh, joining here on Data Science Live. Okay. And in order to clean up the text, I'm just going to call this text. And I'm going to use um, the string replace all from stringer. String replace all. And I'm going to use exec order i. Is that what it is? Is it exec order i? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's it, exec order I. And I'm going to, let's see, to put it in a bracket, slash R, slash N, and close this bracket. So, so what I'm telling it to do is find all the slash R's and slash N's, okay? And then I'm gonna tell it to give me a space, because, um, the tidy text, when we extract all the words, we need to have a space within these words. So I'm going to run that. And let's try, uh, I'm going to create current df to store the values. So we're going to say tibble, tibble, and I'm going to say par equals I and text equals text. This this what I just created here. And then we're going to do doc df and I'm going to do bind rows and we're going to do doc df and current df. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of concatenating all the rows as we go through this loop of all the data. And that's kind of what I have right here. And I think one of the episodes the past few weeks, I did do an example of a for loop. And before I even um, like to try it um, and run all the way through the loop, I will just kind of test it out. And the way I test it out is I just set I to one here. And now that we have I in everything here, I'm just gonna run each of these lines. So let's see what we have our text. Okay, that's our text um, that, that it got extracted. And then I'm gonna go current DF, run that. And we have one observation and one record. Number one with our text in here. Okay, and then doc df should be the same as current df, right? One, so it looks the same. And maybe I just might want to take a look at um, doing doc df dollar sign text. I'll just do one in here. Okay, so this uh, this is kind of the text in here. We still see some of these slashes, but I'm not seeing the um, slash R's or the slash N's in here. So it looks like uh, those have been removed. I'm just going to scroll this down here. And now... I'm going to run the whole thing so that we get our, we should have 13 records in docdf as this thing runs through the loop. Okay, you, did you did that just run through the loop? Yes, it does, because we got our 13 records. And if we open this up, as we can start to see, we've got all the paragraphs or pages and then all the text. So we have, our data frame kind of in the place that we want to be 
for for us to uh, start to kind of parse out the words and then uh, eventually kind of do a word count on all these terms. And what that really does is it's going to be able to summarize the document and allow us to maybe start to analyze um, what is actually going on in um, in this uh, implementation um, um, document. So let's we're going to do in the text analytics, there's a term called tokens, which is really a term for just separate out for what I like to do. I like to do a lot of the words. So we're going to just create tokens. Yeah, tokens, it's a data science-y um, <laughs> term for uh, of in text analytics. So I'm going to call this all terms. And we're going to take docdf, and I'm going to use my pipe on here, and I'm going to use unnest tokens, nest tokens from tidy text, and we're going to call it. Um, the value is going to be a word. We're going to unnest the words, and then the Text is the um, column that we're going to be uh, pulling out all the words. So run this through. And all terms. So we've got 5,857 terms. So let's just take a look, open this up, and see what it did for us. So we have our paragraphs here, and it starts to just parse out each of these words in this document, as you can see. And we have 5,870 of them. But we have terms in here like and, and, all, and, in, and the. And so when we're counting terms, we really don't want these in here because uh, we really want to get a good summary of what's going on here. So in um, in tidy text, there is um, a data a data set called stop words, and these are the words that um, are, are going that we're going to be using that are kind of commonly used that you really don't need for analysis. Like I said, the and, the ends, the twos, that type of thing. So I'm going to put something in here called remove stop words. words and what are we going to do here we're going to go data i'm going to put in here stop underscore words and we sh i think if we run this uh we should have okay so we've loaded that in there and now i'm going to do all another data frame called terms and we're going to clean these up and the way we do this is we're just going to use an anti anti join um, out of the plier anti join and we're going to do all terms or all term and stop words okay and it's going to just do it by word, which is the default, joining by word. And so all terms clean, we went from 5,857 down to um, 3,044. So we removed out a lot of those stop words. And maybe we can just take a look at that here. Okay, yeah. No ands, no ins, twos. Okay, so that we've got our data cleaned up. And now it's time to um, do kind of what we really wanted to do here. And that is, uh, we want to count the number of terms in here and see what is, um, what is, summarize kind of what is being said in this document. So I'm going to call this data frame called Word count 
and you call this all terms clean. I'm going to pipe that into count out of tidy text. Oh, actually, it's, it's I think it's count, and we're going to do word word, and we're going to go sort equals true. And this will give me um, um, a data frame that will have, you know, basically our workhouse, what we're trying to do. So let me pull this up here. So we got them summarized in 1,068 terms. And maybe, maybe I think I just might want to just take a look at the top 30 here. So maybe let's just do... Uh, Let's slice them. We're going to do 1 through 30. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, that, that, yeah, that, that's good, because this is really, we want to get kind of the key terms. I think 30 is going to be a good start to take a look at this. So I'm going to just kind of pop this out so we can just take a look at these terms. Maybe get this a little bit bigger. So, um, okay, number one term, border, where, all right? S number two term, alien, immigration, aliens in the top five. So this is border, where, uh, this is what? Um, here's some actions here. S sounds like removals in action. Uh, C PB, that's an acronym for Customs and Border Patrol. There's a director. There's ICE, um, immig Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Um, that's another agency. INA, um, I believe, is another uh, agency within Department of Homeland Security. Again, Security Enforcement, um, Detention. And then we've got... Um, asylum, political asylum, uh, officer, parole, commissioner, uh, and then some interesting thing: children, criminal, unaccompanied. Uh, we've seen how this plays out. Uh, operations, law department. So um, you know, this is this is kind of you can start to go through this and kind of figure out. You know what is what they're actually going to implement, how they're going to implement it, who's going to implement it, right? You got uh, customs, border patrol, immigrations, and uh, customs enforcement, INA. I don't exactly know what that an an acronym is, um, but you know there's you know there's things in here about uh, children unaccompanied um, that we have to play out and. There's one thing that I'd kind of like to point out in here is this thing, 235. So this shows up here, and from what I know about um, uh, federal government and these implementation orders, this is, looks like that this is probably the rule number um, or uh, some type of legal um, uh, pre I guess the the rule or the law um, article of law that they're referencing in this implementation document. So it's been uh, uh, referenced twenty times. So if you're going through this big document, this is the thing that they're using to justify um, a lot of their actions. This rule or this law is used to justify a lot of these actions. So if you're uh, a data journalist, you're probably going to want to take a look at seeing what this is and what it actually means and how they justify it. If you're in issues advocacy on either side, you're going to want to make sure that um, if you're on this issue, you want to be advocating some um, uh, to your uh, to Congress to maybe uh, either weaken or strengthen this law, depending on uh, what side you're on. So this is just kind of interesting how it how this uh, popped out of this um, 
uh, implementation document. So that's about uh, all I have here for uh, for now. That's um, I hope you learned a little bit about it. Um, Quiet Deviant, oh, fascinating. This must be how word clouds are made. Yeah, this is, um, there is a word cloud uh, function uh, within um, the tidy text that you can do it. Um, right now, I'm just, just looking at uh, a lot of the terms. Um, you'll see these kind of pop out um, based off of these numbers and the sizes. Uh, you know, this border will be the biggest term in the word cloud. So, um, uh, again, um, I want to uh, thank you for uh, watching episode 24 of Data Science Live. I hope you learned a little bit here. And I've been slack, honestly. I've been slack on posting a lot to datasciencelive.com blog. I did get the last episode up. I have a few more that are still sitting there. Uh, but I am going to work on this one first before I start to get all the back stuff on there. Um, I'd also like you, again, to please follow my channel on Twitch. YouTube, uh, Freaka TV, and turn on notifications for when I do go live. I appreciate your companionship with me here today. And until the next cast, um, goodbye for now, dear friends.